Before starting, just simply a word of of the on the initiative here. It's a co a European cooperative initiative for inclusion for people with have disabilities in countries a mid mid ranking countries mid income countries for inclusive education in two Latin American countries, Paraguay and Ecuador. And through this experience, well, here we are uh, using this issue of of this context, and particularly considering the conditions in which boys and girls and these capacities that we have, these abilities that we have, in, given the pandemic. Also, to debate these issues uh, or, or within the generation of management and use of data for best practices for inclusive education and also to have greater capacity in influencing organizations with disabilities for education inclusive. We have a panel, which first level panel, which I'm honored to moderate. These panelists are Cincia Brizuela, who's the representative of UNICEF, Manos Antonini from UNESCO, Javier González from SUMA, and Magdalena Orlando from Independent Consultant, and Daniel Salas from Ecuador. Thank you to everybody, and I thank you this availability of being here today. And well, you know, we start a little bit late, as is normal in this conference, which is so wide ranging. And so I'm not going to go f much further in my presentation. We have guided our, our main aspects here that we want to address. And, uh, and just we will try to go through this thread, guiding thread that will and to this disaggregating data or generating data for inclusive education. Without further ado, our first uh, moderator, Javier Santellini. And um, before that, I remember that, that you have 12 minutes for your intervention. I will remind you when there's two minutes to go so that you can wrap up. And uh, perhaps you can have a little bit of time to, re to get some questions that we may, we may have from some of the participants. So Manos Antonini, your representative from, um, this is UNESCO from GEN, Global Impression Monitoring 2020, main results and recommendations for inclusive education linked to data. Mano is an expert in follow and evaluation of projects in the educational sphere. In 2011, he became to the GEM report team it has international economies, economists from from uh, Atenas University and a master's in economic development from Oxford University. His th thesis is of a technical formation and the labor market in Egypt. So without further ado, Manos, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you for sharing screen. So thank you very much for your invitation. It's a big honor to having received your invitation. I value the objectives of Zero Project. The report, the follow-up report of, of education in the world has a mandate of the internet of monitoring the, the, the educational follow of education. We are independent editorial team ascribed to the UNESCO. Um, edition 2020 centered on inclusion of a key element to achieve the objective of global of education, OS4. Plus, we, we, at the beginning of the month, we published a new series from, we sent from, sent from last year with Oreal UNESCO Santiago and the regional report is supported by the global structure and its uh, recommendations. Plus, we have 29 studies, case studies on eight dimensions, which are associated with exclusion. For example, four of these studies refer to students with disabilities, Cuba, Jamaica, Paraguay, and 
My colleague would go further into this. On my half, I will present a general description of the key issues regarding data, disability, education, and on the global world, which re, which takes a full chapter to the issue. Before anything, that made me share with you the key uh, uh, report of the report, the key learning of the report on on. All, every country reaffirms its commitments with inclusive education. However, it is fair to say not all countries have clarity on the on the issues that they committed to in 2015. This reports to include refers to inclusion as a process, thinking of the process that promote diversity and generate a system, a system of pertinence. You know, to have social cohesion. These actions are based on on the belief that everybody has value. The system, education system, they should not discriminate nor reject everybody. They should be adapted to students and adjust therein. It is us who must adapt. The data are essential to support inclusion. Firstly, data must detect the, who have the risk of falling behind and determine what are the obstacles for inclusion. Secondly, data based on data on 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 those who are left behind and the reasons why this is done. Governments thus can uh, prepare empirical uh, models based on empirical data and test their results and models on on recording the results and pass on assistance and learnings. They should also follow follow up on the feelings of belonging, mutual respect, and social valuation. A focus uh, they're given to a systematic examination of le different levels at schools and to the system, and uh, several different results, not only on products direct and direct products, but also on given certain processes. Labels affect those who are persons who are labeled and reaffirm them in that category. The recopilation of data must be done carefully so as not to uh, cause damage. In acknowledging children with full full uh, problems, they must have a certain uh, equilibrium. Acknowledgement can be useful to inform teachers on the needs of the students, even those who have invisible deficiencies. Schools are based on that information to undertake specific adaptations on, another, on the other hand, you have the risk that the uh, school friend, school class, classmates reduce the child to a label. They behave in such a way according to the label, which gets few expectatives, expect to having difficulties in learning. They can act as a self-fulfilling prophecy. The special needs labeling increase the vulnerability of the child of the children. The categories of needs, special needs, has together a stigma and vary and affect the data. Some considerations in assess the consequences are if formal or informal, and if they are public or private in nature. It is possible to minimize the impact, prejudicial aspect of diagnosis of, of labels and categories such that they can be useful for reporting and not only to decide the practice which is going to be adapted. This modality affects the type of data notified. In legislation of Portugal, we had recently focused we apply a focus not only based on uh, determining special needs, but these measures which are fall outside the categories defined is centered rather on the level of support provided. The focus not based on categories has repercussions on the on the data uh, collected. Apart from uh, the, uh, the amount of numbers of children with specific uh, problems, the data receives to the number of students receiving support. The visualization of these reports of special, with special needs can be separated from a, uh, uh, for the assignation of resources. The census and surveys are based on statistics, national and world statistics, which are based on policies which tend to do this, 
see to this, the main issues in regarding questions on this capacity, this ability have been capacities and knowledge. For example, if we believe that disability is something that is causes problems for the family, certain questions um, yeah, adhere to fear to the family. If you have, so if you have disability, it's a long process to classify the international classification of functionality of disability and health and the classification for children and young people have been fundamental from going from model based on the medical diagnosis to a more social model. In 2001, the Commission of Statistics for the United Nations established a group of Washington on, on statistics of this capacity or disability. And 2006, you have a brief questions, list of questions, you know, to include that in a census of questions. These 10 questions range from functional aspects, sight, ear, mobility, cognition, self-care, and communication, plus the wide-ranging queries and tests together with UNICEF, we elaborated a module on f child functioning applied with large scale in multiple indicators per, per conglomerate mixed by UNICEF. In the module, it's a fundamentally on the difficult learning difficulties and you, the importance of the children be free from anxiety and depression. In the 14 countries, where we affected estimate, estimates based on, on child functioning in the mix, the proportion of children who had a, a functional capacity in at least one area had 12% on average, going from 6% in Mongolia to 24% in Tunis. The characteristics pose, that expose people to risk uh, do not affect everybody equally. For example, according to the interaction uh, this capacity or disability and the class and gender ability, the sum is more is, is, is than the sum. The sample size is a challenge for the analysis of disadvantages related in such. When you focus on uh, on people who gather multiple specific characteristics, uh, service or normalized homes are affected by giving a quick, a rapid decrease in the samples and you get errors. However, it's important not to subestimate, underestimate the risks that poor people with disability can be subject of to exclusion, double exclusion because society in general, but also because of the movement um, with, from within the movement of people for disability. Not all children with disability have a special needs. Not all special needs with special needs ha have necessarily a disability. The determination of special needs is different to the measurement of disability, and this consensus is found therein. The percentage of students who are known with special educational needs varies amply. In Europe, oscillates from 1% in, in Sweden and 21% in, in, in Scotland. That variation is explained given the differences in which this category, educational category, is built. It is difficult to compare the prevalence of this capacity, the difficulties and disadvantage in all the educational premises and throughout time, particularly in, in cases with di defined diagnosis. In Germany and the United States, le le learning problems is an individual category. It's the most individual important category of special needs, but are practically unknown in Japan. The incorporation of indica inclusion indicators in, in system in the administration administration of education is one of the best practices, best new practices. The UNESCO statistics program examined the methods of gathering data on, on this capacity and on 71 countries in low and mid-income countries to define what measures it would be available or we needed, what measures could contribute to follow up on the national policy and however this system rec recollect data with sufficient data in relation to this capacity or the programs or results education results in order to obtain results non-academic results particularly is fundamentally to consult young people and to recollect their opinions in this way apart from having this you have pra inclusive practices a decisive aspect is to 
is to is to state that children could look after their disagreement, including nonverbal uh, disagreement. In qualitative aspects, the, the non-governmental organizations have promoted to, for a long time inclusive education at, at national and regional level, even if governments see to the needs to vulnerable people. In Article 33 of the Convention on the of Rights of People with this disabilities states that organization of people with disabilities they they the the, the collaborate to collaborate with the mechanisms independent follow up mechanisms some of these organizations prepare and present report parallel reports to the united nations committee on the rights of people with disabilities so thank you very much for your uh, um, attention you you can query the report on the following um, trail. Thank you, Manos. Gracias. Inclusiva y muchos otros elementos que se relacionan también con los aspectos cualitativos que me han parecido particularmente interesantes, Manos, más allá de la pura recopilación de datos, lo que decías, eh, los datos sobre apartenencia, aceptación, etcétera, y al final, obviamente, la necesidad de consultar a niños y niñas y jóvenes con discapacidad directamente para que sus experiencias, sus opiniones salgan reflejadas en las encuestas. Los aspectos que también, evidentemente, complican aún más la recopilación de datos, que pero son indispensables y necesarios. Muchas gracias entonces, Manos, para arrancar también nuestra, eh, nuestra sesión. Podemos entonces ahora eh, seguir adelante y ya eh, Manos ha brevemente introducido a Javier González, director de SUMA, eh, que nos dará una presentación eh, relativa al enfoque regional del Global Education Monitoring inclusión y educación en América Latina y en el Caribe. Eh, pues Javier es economista por la Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile, magister doctor en Desarrollo Económico y Social de la Universidad de Cambridge. Cambridge University, specialist in equation, disability, innovation, sociability, currently director SUMA and affiliated doctor of development studies in Cambridge University, also member of the UNESCO C and co-editor in, in, in education in UNESCO World for Latin America. And as, so, Javier, if you can, you have the floor. Thank you very much. And to Zero Project. It's a fundamental the inclusion, particularly um, in a region which is most unequal region in the world, with a lot of ability of exclusion, plat in school and the community. In the case of education, we understand inclusion, and we we have a definition how we understand inclusion, and not only have to knowledge but also to value and to build <clears throat> on the differences. And that is the big challenge that all the systems has. Um, and that is why, in together with Inter-American Mass <clears throat> 2016, we create SUMA as a re regional research center su supported by 10 education ministries. And they create this in regional institution aiming to promote the human right to education. We do this from 2016 onwards together with the governments and different countries through different projects with school communities, making research, promoting the synthesis of evidence, what we can learn from all the research done in academia, both in Latin America as in the world. Given a synthesis, we develop and detect. Seleccionamos aquellas iniciativas que parecen tener mayor impacto en en los distintos temas relevantes y desafíos que tiene nuestra educación 
directa e indirectamente con distintos socios en terreno, adaptamos y testeamos estas soluciones eh, en distintos países, eh, en el Caribe, en Centroamérica, en Sudamérica. Centroamérica, Sudamérica. And finally, what we promote is scaling and the incidence both at macro policies and funding or in changes of constitutional to the constitution or micro or like in teacher training practices or teacher practices. We promote practices which are based on principles principles which are not based in evidence but based on principles of inclusion equality equality but based but and and re informed on evidence it's always important although it's based in principles but it be informed on evidence and in that sense together with the team and, and together with unesco santiago we decided to address this project to go forward with this project which we launched last week and which bears relation to this report that my colleague manos antonini refers who was referring to earlier has been a collaborative work which allows us to have for first time a regional report for latin america which what it seeks is to have an empiric basis for discussion and uh, most comparable of this, uh, one of the issues is comparability in the issues that we have, but the things that we have a regional scope, which has a more richer panorama than what we have than this delivered by this type of reports. This report, as mentioned by my colleague, has ample report um, um, based on on 29 studies, case studies in 19 countries of the region in eight groups suffering the greatest exclusion levels, not only poverty, as we generally see in many of the regional reports, but also in disabilities, migration, rural, rural localities, gender, ethnics, and those deprived of freedom youngsters with pride of freedom where you have high levels of uh, of deprived of liberty and also for inclusion of the lgbt communities we have to do with orient sexual orientation so amongst these three institutions we decided to address a report which we may have to understand those groups which are the most excluded which are fall outside our statistics as analyzing the system from seven dimensions this is a legal framework, governance and funding, curriculum tech schools in and, and the communities that lie within. And also there's a chapter on, on what happens today with regards to this. Now, what regarding this conference, I will center on the few minutes that I have left on what we can do from this information that we have reviewed and not only has to do with data at the individual levels, but also at policy levels, how we public policy is moving with regards to the number of people who have this capacity in Latin America. The first thing that I would like to mention is that, um, is that access and therefore the right to education is ha under threat. Just remind ourselves that the right to education is more than just simply the free access. One is in one of the potential of the level of education. It's important to see the contribution. I mean, much of the laws here are generally referred to access, but many countries, including um, Chile, where I am today sitting, in the same constitution, they do not include other dimensions that have bear any influence on the right to education, access to discrimi absence, discri discrimination, adaptation, in this case, for people who have disabilities and what has to do with qualities and quality standards. So this means that today, young people um, who have secondary education have 10% uh, less probabilities of going to school 
than perhaps people who don't have this capacity. Now, this varies in accordance to these capacities that we exist here. In terms of we changed the region from 85 to, to 95, except in Salvador and Brazil. The assistance in, in it's varies 24 and 84%, and obviously the most uh, affected has to do with physical education mobility, where you vary from 35 to 20, 24% in assistance. So, so there is a debt, clear debt with these people of having to, to provide them equal opportunities. This also has been seen in the COVID times, even relating to virtual access. An example has been seen in more than 11 countries where we have data. People with disabilities have less access to communication technologies and which also accentuates the, the, the problems we're living through. Antigua and Bermuda, for example, there's 40 point percentage points, for example, and Antigua and Bermuda. All this means that the scholarity of people who have disabilities in general is three years less than on average than the rest of the population in Latin America. So, and it can be more if we consider uh, between slight and serious disabilities, which can go up to four years of, of lag in, in education, years of education. And here I'm going to send in some of my, one of the dimensions, I cannot state all of them. It has to do with what the law state. On the one hand, it says that the region is very act active and we have to acknowledge that we are starting to see the importance of legislating or um, organizing opportunities. However, it's important to say that this 42% of Latin American legislation provides education to people with disabilities in segregated rooms. Only 60%, 16% do it in inclusive. And in between, we have a mix. So 42% still do not include normally um, people who have uh, uh, disabilities. In Nicaragua, this is a third of people who have disabilities. In Chile, up in 2018, we stayed, although there are still 2,000 special schools right, with an education, different education, segregated education. So therefore, although we made progress, in visualizing on, on, on institutional uh, definition if, of the regulation or on having greater concern for these groups, they're still being uh, um, biased in character. Given governance, and this not to do with, um, have to do with people with this capacity, but also some, something that does affect people who have this capacity, it has to do with governance of the region. Latin America is the most private, privatized region of the world. Uh, some ideological, some uh, religious, in case of Argentina, uh, Federico, yes? Or in the case of IT, where we have some, some failures from the state. This had led to high levels of privatization, which reveals the fragility of the results uh, for Latin America to be guarantees of the right to education, but also makes vulnerable these young people with this capacity because, because of what is seen is that in privatized system, we have concentrations in, in, in special schools because amongst other things, schools have to have between of cost they tend to exclude this type of population so uh, where we have invested or less than we have invested the OECD and less so than the eight thousand dollars as benchmark we could establish or define up to eight thousand dollars per, per student per year we can see that there's kind of relation between expense and quality this issue of that governance is made at private level 
is 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 a serious uh, concern of serious concern in a region that where we've seen although as percentage of gdp you spend adequately as public expenses there's still a lot to go in terms of funding and there are some figures here that we've seen for example jamaica 24 percent only 24 percent of schools had uh, ramps and 11 percent uh, uh, fully accessible toilets in costa rica 65 percent of schools were not accessible in honduras this meant that it's an important um, uh, uh, course for abandoning uh, uh, studies and this means that that to adapt a school which has been built is much more expensive than doing it from the beginning the situation that inclusive design from the start increase one percent of cost while doing it afterwards increases it in, 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 a, in a five or more percent of the construction costs so there's three challenges here and i start closing now basically on the one has to be establishing norms of services that that, that they have inclusive concept 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 of inclusion and this affects costs <clears throat> People will affect costs, and this is important in that lab, in uh, the region where many in the public, in the ministry, government ministry are stating for the next year, 2021, reducing bud educational budgets. We have to be wary of that, and so it's important to have certain results, which are uh, of which we can uh, uh, we can make our states responsible for this, and to end. There has to be the data and to reinforce what Manus has been stating with a official more of in the region. We can the region can really make in some efforts. You can see from using uh, questions of the Washington group, which have been even more intensity now. However, this continues to be a scarcity, a very strong scarcity of uh, data, despite the efforts which are made between UNESCO and, and, and the Jan Report team. We are experts and academics with which we're working in each other countries. We transmit the, the lack of data that we have and what we have to transmit to them, the importance and urgency of making progress in that sense. Despite these advances, nine countries in Latin America don't even collect data of youngsters with disabilities. So I would like to stay on that vein and to state that if we believe in the importance of institutions then that has to mean that that to reflect the type of data and the recopilation of data of on that everything that which is not measures is invisible and that is scarce what we this important that we need so in that sense we must make an effort in that regard. Thank you regional del informe GEM con algunos datos eh, de verdad muy impactantes eh, y con mucha variabilidad como tú has, has bien has presentado y que evidentemente presented and variety that's to also attention with a need to reinforce um, that that dimension recopilation of development analysis of data which is every more often stronger we're doing doing things making progress but it's a lot of stuff to be made yet this elements that are being added to the issues and to start thinking about that more i think about indicators on what we will speak of later but there's a lot of work to be done still to facilitate this programming and public programming and assignation of funds technical resources and human resources such that inclusive education be um, made fulfilled so thank you much very much javier we will go now to our first uh, 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 first uh, with cincia brizuela who will present work made by unicef to strengthen um, inclusive education with intersectoral analysis cincia is a specialist in inclusion uh, 
of children with this capacity for the UNICEF regional office in the Latin America and Caribbean. She's a doctorate from New York University and a specialization in public administration from she was Vice Minister of Education in Paraguay and worked towards Pedagogic Centre CIEP in France. She's university lecturer and consultant for various national and international projects in for the BID, PNUD and others. Cynthia, you have the floor. Thank you. Very good afternoon. Thank you for your presentation, particularly for, for the space. And this space given to me where we're talking about um, the need to have data which helps us to plan, which is to manage, to order a system, an educational system, which as we will see in the next presentations, next has several challenges. And these challenges were um, came to the fore in the context that we're currently living. And I want to start with this phrase, which I've used in other presentations, pre previous presentations. I take that from a presentation from a colleague. I lift that from him, and this from is Jasmine Harris, from Jasmine Harris, in the publication that I share with you. The process of inclusion based on the Convention of the Human of the rights of people with, dis with disabilities and the rights of the children, for example, who have human rights approach need to be promoted from, from a fundamental faith. We, if we're talking about data, that if we're going to we recollect data, human or Javier's message as presented, we have to understand and believe, convince ourselves that it is possible to reduce discrimination because of capacity if we if we can see them. And from the idea here, from with people with and without this capacity, with the expectations that that context will reduce prejudicial attitudes and will change social norms. So what are we looking with this for the exclusion education? What is the difference that we're seeing? Why change the focus, the medical focus, to the focus based on rights, how the Convention of, of Rights for People with Discapacity, I talked to a specialist, but I'm also talking to, as a mother, a person with discapacity as well, so disabilities. So this, this takes us or leads us to find uh, ourselves and seek that inclusion from UNICEF. What did we know before pandemia? What is is what you have to highlight the 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 gaps and the the gaps that and that we have to unite with these uh, sources that Federico told us uh, at the beginning of the presentation. We knew that in Latin America there were eight million children under 14 who had disabilities and seven out of ten and that is the alarming figure would not go to school. With pandemia, we knew from February to that February to September in the in the world, 1.5 billion people, students. In, while in Latin America, that's 160 million students outside the educational system, and of these six and a half million who had some kind of disability as registered in the educational system are outside. Be, they continue being so, given several challenges that are presented to us by this pandemic. Well, the difficulties, I'm not going to stop in that, the difficulties here, obvious difficulties that pandemic has given for inclusion of people with disabilities, such as the, the fulfillment of basic hiding obstacles to have social distance barriers for access to social to distance learning, as mentioned before, also, the uh, the protection of childhood, they are all different types of challenges that today we are jointly trying to resolve. Uh, so how to see to these challenges, taking into account the large amount of children with disabilities in Latin America are outside the, uh, the system. And now taking also into account that data are not um, 
they do not got the characteristics that we have in order to have appropriate planning. So the educational planning in generally are add up to the following limited capacities and resources necessary because now we have to have distance learning and that would be here that we had not developed all these methodologies from resources and capacities of, of education systems. There is a limited focus of social policies which make reference to made reference to by my colleagues we have got the need to have integrated uh, view of policy in order to give an answer not only the educational policies but also the absence of educational educational tools based on an accessible model for learnings for everybody to eradicate this deep rooted uh, vision we, as i said in the beginning we have to in a in deep down we have to really believe, or do we not believe that students with disabilities, with a difference and diversity, functional diversity, can in, indeed learn? That is a fundamental question. We based on the fact that, yes, they can do, all students can learn, and they are, uh, have the maximum potential, taking into consideration aspects which make adaptation of the curriculum to uh, materials, education materials, based on a accessible design on methods and strategies which are based on opportunities that were needed to add to diversity and this challenge of including orientations and tools for mothers fathers and carers has been of importance in the times whereby scarce is at home it is not somewhere else the school is at home so carers, main carers, families, mothers, and fathers have to use, occupy themselves within that context. So we have the need that the educational, inclusive education be considered as an across the board issue, as I stated in all poli policies, not only education policies, that the educational system considers everybody, all students at all levels and in all schools public, private, as they were stated, the Latin America was very privatized in that context. Regular schools, this is just the one educational system. And although the the viewpoint is inclusive education, we have can have integral focus, particularly in the smallest ones. Education services have to complement and calculate from the first infancy to that health, nutrition, and protection be looked at as this integral way and take into account from going from special education, as pointed earlier, for, to an inclusive manner based on a system or, or universal design, learning design. Collect data to support planning. So we were stating previously on modules, education, inclusive education model, which is being developed from UNICEF, and which has, which has a focus on the development of capacities within the system. But also there's another module on the functioning of these, how students learn. And it's important to cross both sets of information such that development of a, inclusive education in the richness of diversity. There are several responses. I know it's very little time left, and I can't go way beyond time here, but I just want to share part of the report that Manos presented and Javier presented us. CEPAL also uh, published a very interesting report where they had made survey in order to listen to the students and the educational system, and it's called uh, COVID, how to mitigate impact and protect rights in order to ensure inclusion. It has one chapter, interesting chapter, on education and several examples on how to make scalable of several interesting examples of responses in these COVID times. I won't stop here, but I would want to point out that this underlines these initiatives at the, which at the regional level are interesting, are not only interesting, but are necessary, and this is because, but not enough. Why? Because the gap is so big. 
that it would mean to have one of the questions that I would do for some several, so many years from the rights of children, uh, uh, people with disabilities, uh, that, that we focus on inclusion that is being promoted and is being promoted from civil society and is promoted from organizations that work towards the development of the states. How can we rebuild rather, on, if we, in, in English we have this phrase which is being used in these days, it's called building back better, how to rebuild better. So how can we, apart from identifying the responses, these answers that we're seeing in several countries, which integrate into the system, education system, which integrate answers such as sign language, sub subtitling, adapted information, but how to continue growing, uh, how to bring to the, into the system those students which have been outside the system. And there's so much expectations that the rule, the golden rule that I would please is to ask to those who know to get together with, with those who have been working for years And so this, how do we work in a way which is coordinated with that organization has stated answers and which add, which can teach us, I have two minutes here, how can we associate in order to develop better skills? I think that we're very interesting lab point in order to work with inclusion. Inclusion is necessary in order to have a level capable of building more peaceful and fair capacities where no one is left behind. That is the, that is the, uh, what we have to, to say. No one's left behind. The, the progress made in the regions, national laws, local laws, institutions created to regulate rights of children and the dollar cents the, the adhesion of all countries to Marrakesh Treaty, efforts made by countries and municipalities in order to have physical access, education, uh, gradual in interception for learnings in, in the form, in, in, in formation of teachers. There are several answers that contemplate these answers where we are making progress but we continue to be cases which have to become part of the system. And only just to finish, I leave this question open. We must change the paradigm. So the notion of rescuing the child and substituting by the incorporation of measures to eradicate these barriers, that's important. But it's a decision, collective decision, which we might assume collectively and I would leave that here because I have several other issues that perhaps would appear, come up in the questions. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Excellent presentation. And um, yeah, there are very many elements here that relate to the presentation of Manos and Javier. There's a point that I want to state, which is related to what Daniel says on educational material accessibility in this phase of the pandemia, also in Ecuador, what's happening, hap and trying to reinforce that on the system, the, the accessibility system in this COVID phase. There's lots to be done yet, but yes, maybe it's the point here, the opportunity to, to change this paradigmatic sense. The same system here, an inclusive system here, or to nine, uh, it talks about how inclusive education needs to, means that need to change, culture change, political, practical, important. So in that sense, in that phase of pandemic, we're rethinking that, we're thinking of the way in which we work and how we go to school, but this is all the elements, inclusion elements that are called within that and can be an opportunity that will have uh, an, a traffic tra tragic occurrence, but will take us slowly to a, a greater educational inclusiveness. So thank you very much for your presentation, Cynthia. And we'll go to our next uh, expose, 
which is Magdalena Orlando, who will talk about the presentation of educational inclusion proposals in order to affect public policies. Magdalena is a clinical psychologist for the UMSES University, Masters in Integration for Salamanca University and specialized in the disability focused on human rights with participation in organization, local intervention. Focal point of, dis of disability in, you, in Buenos Aires. Uh, and, the on, uh, and on NGO, including UNICEF, and is a consultant for the city of Buenos Aires on inclusive education policy, and also has worked in with us in um, in more than one occasion. And are, I will never cease to be uh, so grateful on her work and on her work and for an empowerment of women and empowerment of of, of, of people with disabilities. So, Madalena, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Federico. Thank you much for everybody. You. To my colleagues, it's a pleasure to listen to you the, and the organization for inviting me. I don't know, know if, it's, if it's on screen, my presentation. Can you see it? I can see it here. I can see it, yes. My first, here's the first page. Well, I would like to uh, say something that's been said by my colleagues, but it's quite obvious not to take uh, actions forward, concrete actions we need in, in inclusive action to have data in this key. Uh, paraphrasing hand scope, what is measured we obtain. The data is according to level of disability is useful to a certain level, but not enough for other levels. For example, the needs for support for a person as not a category, it's an interaction with that particular person, which may fit a category or not in the different contexts. Uh, in accordance to how the context are, the requirements of support can vary. And it's very clear in the context of pandemia. It's a moment whereby we, uh, this, we see ourselves challenged regarding how we see ourselves. If we have the support as a resource and strategy whose purpose is to more development in welfare, uh, personal welfare, and in, to improve per personal performance in a, in a con in, in certain context is to measure the supports given. Uh, a possible dimension that I use it answers to the level of responses by that implies to consider if each activity, in each activity, the frequency, the daily time supported and the type of support and nature of the support. This is important because often when we talk about support, particularly um, when we state concrete strategies, states ask, how many people are we talking about? That's what they state. So is what we put here is without, uh, without uh, is to continue uh, uh, stating what data we continue measuring in order to undertake this. The measurement of support yes, must not be confused with materiality in accessible formats. That's clear to, to, to everybody. Practices in inclusive education requires that the system guarantees uh, common learnings for everybody is for everybody. That's been repeated by my colleagues. We all know that, but we all know also that everybody in general is not in general everybody, but some. So we need to continue working along that lines and support for inclusion for uh, all students, which means to think of an inclusive system which may answer to students which are disabilities are included, but they're not the only ones to be considered. So have you said this, this practice exceed the students on the one side? It's not on talking about the, the students when we talk about inclusive system, but access the discapacity system. So it's important to have to measure the capacity of the system or these systems to have an answer diversity also to for those who work in the system. I wanted to share a recommendation and that is to further the supports by Gordon Porter, whose education system demonstrated success 
And here we have a very exhaustive way the systems in different components. And I wanted to to share some key key components which are part of the system, which is taken from policy policy 322, which is from 2013, and to they, that the inclusive education practices are, are necessary for the good development of all students and are critical, you know, to build an inclusive society for everybody based on human rights. It's a universal and it's part of the studies of projects with equity and personalized based on interest and strengths. The key element to support an inclusive system is to remove barriers for learning and to access opportunities to learning respect for the for students and for staff regarding race color origin age disability sexual orientation real or perceived and today from gender social condition belief or political activity in margin to this that everybody can do from their role whatever i don't have here who are listening to, the, to me so in this sense we have to have two tools which are up here here which serve as support for measure the capacity of the system one is indicators for national unity the united nations system as built of found in article 24 because they indicators for other articles and the other resource is the inclusion in this as developed by tony wood and melanie scope which are research tools for action for improving school performance. I would ask now that you go to the, they can leave me that one, please. Well, because of times, I will share just few, a couple of indicators only. Although the development here, you have the indicator structure, process and results, what I'm sharing here are structures. 24-1, legislation promoted by guaranteeing inclusive education for all students, including students with disabilities, public and private surroundings. Strategy plan with plans and coverage clear for the mission of systems to uh, inclusive education as directed by the Ministry of Education. You know that very often students with certain capacities are not taken forward by the Ministry of Education, but often in the region, we have, they are led by a health ministries. 24-8, the study plans incorporate inclusive education standards that reflect diversity of, of learning needs for all students and allow mod modification adaptations of, of study plans as adequate to all the 24-9, accessibility norms adopted and applicable for all, uh, all the surroundings and education material, including extracurricular activities. 2410 legislation promoted that prohibits the violence, intimidation, and, and educational surroundings, including uh, this capacity reasons. This is a brief. All these indicators are um, enriching and complement each other mutually, and perhaps help in a clearing up structural indicators aim at the organizational framework, the process, which I didn't put them here, aim at uh, conducive results and uh, measures in, in, in our objective. Uh, all these indicators are both for civil society so that we can have information on supports and accompany a process, also accompanying process 2410 of convention as for the all owning planning of the ministries. We can go on. Lastly, and not less important, I would want to include inclusion index. This tool I've used several times. This thought for schools, but can also be used to improve the levels of inclusion of nearly any organization or all organizations. Logics proposes based on the three dimensions mentioned here we have to do with cultures policies and practices and which are based in creating and modifying as much as i said any organization part of the central idea is to have pertinence and participation as mentioned in this table mentioned by other colleagues mentioning the importance of measuring this the valuation of each 
contemplating all the systems, the system to have a logic of thought and action that seeks to understand and decrease, minimize, and ideally eliminate existing barriers. And you can see dimensions here. You see, observing the dimension and carrying out an axis, act and measure. We always do this from the organization. It's not done externally, and uh, with having this as an action map, where each time we choose what record to take in order to further the levels of inclusion. What is presented here? A brief screenshot. I was to my inclusion as, as a consultant or how or being worked in public instances and also for organizations apart from disaggregated data on data on the system we have to continue working on the one height on strategic needs and conglomerates on the rights to see tending to the particular and to the collective in order to have the ability for everybody also in the indicators that get together to make materials accessible. And hand in hand with this, we have to continue working, at least in the region, in mechanisms transparent in nature of the civil society in the building of public policies. I thank the presentations. I leave my contacts here. There's two links here that you can access both inclusion and, and the bridge in the gap from the United Nations and also put to your disposal through my mail the data that I shared from Eurensis Canada and the possible ways of measuring support. Thank you very much. Thank you, Magdalena, plus also for your excellent uh, uh, keeping to the times. Fantastic. And I think it's been very interesting to some elements that I've been writing down on the one hand, on, on the holistic point of, of we're talking about people with this capacity. When we talk about inclusion, it's also we have to refer to other groups which are vulnerable or in the margin of educational system. And that is the way that we have here, um, which you, Madalena, has mentioned and all the examples which is particularly relevant, particularly if we talk about the from the United Nations and Catalina and Yolanda. Second, beyond the going beyond these tools and indicators, which I ask you to to Anna to visit, and which I think that can propose very uh, interesting elements to all of you. This relates to what you said later, this mechanism which are trans for civil society, the use of these indicators, not only do they, for decision makers to plan and launch advanced inclusion policies, but also to civil society organization to make the follow up that they must do as, watch, as watchdogs, as responsible for um, people who have this capacity and try to make these exercises of political incidents for better public policies in the future easier to do so if we're better reported and we know this information better referring to the culture the policies in this case and education also applicable to other systems before we go to our last uh, panelist to thank madalena once more please remember you can ask your questions through the the box here. Uh, we're, we're receiving a couple, and uh, we'll try to summarize them at the end of the session. We'll do that now with our last panelist of the day, Daniel Sala, a psychologist, female psychologist, and uh, he's a master of child development mentioned in autism and wide experience in information in to people who have intellectual discapacity and development. He's been zero, awarded by Zero Project Awards and so has several publications in the area of discapacity, amongst which highlight the ones that I hear, this is how I learn, 
clinical evaluation and this, uh, and odontopediatric. And also we looked at how it's been done here, uh, shortening distance in Ecuador, uh, particularly in in in, in, in uh, autistic children in Ecuador. Thank you, Daniel. It's a pleasure to be with you. Well, here, yeah, we are okay here. Thank you for your project, Sir Federico, for the space to be such a... Uh, I thank you very much for the information you're giving me. What I'm going to do here is trying to use uh, concrete practices in bridging the gap in Ecuador as also in the generation of data that you can uh, from the civil society you know to generate public policies we're normally not very used that this data uh, alarm the states and they get themselves involved and they generate public policy but then the application is public policy doesn't have resources sometimes it's quite tiring the process that's why in civil society what we aim at is is to generate good best practices we're going to be universalized in the in the and to build public policy from that point and here i learned this well, what we learned here is to find seek and find as it possible the creation of public policy from incidents of civil society and and direct incidents of, of, the, of whoever is the person who has disabilities help me with so moving the slide forward i would like to move forward uh, where the process started, starting in 2017, 2018, mainly with this data, the only the hard data that we have then in the country, which stated some things of interest. The main thing that they stated was the agreement, uh, having the problem with people who, who intellectual disabilities, they would fall behind in the educational system. The challenge was to bring all these people who are outside, but also avoid in our case that the goes inside would drop out to avoid them to dropping out seven to twelve years only 39 percent who are outside the education system majority were inside not not by much majority but yes they were but what would happen from 13 to 18 years 18 they would fall to 54 percent outside the educational system and from 19 to they would 88 percent outside the system so we use this range of from 19 to 24 because the age was system here part of the education and to which i'm more common including the university system however when we find this 12 uh, 19 24 percent within the system that's not think that this is going to be people who intellectual discapacity in higher education but people who had a, a, a learning backlog who would follow the baccalaureate and would report in, in official data. But also I'm showing you as time went by, the smaller the children left younger and inclusive. So that would draw our attention powerfully. What didn't we know? We didn't know objectively this. If you show me next, I want to show you some of the data we used. We knew them informally. We sent them information through these mini surveys and you know, to see why they were exiting the education system, those who had intellectual disabilities. And we found multiple problems in spaces and in common perhaps with the region. The first that the state is willing to work, at least in our case, for inclusion, but without solving structural problems of education. We, want, we don't want to go to a system which to a certain extent we have positive discrimination where they're very good inclusive system but whereby the student still has so many um, weaknesses and we have to correct those structural weaknesses in the system where everybody's well seen to is a system is where the student with, with intellectual disability is going to be well seen to and so we went at that a system where we have excess of students per, per room teachers are not very well prepared and, and, and the investment is 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 lacking from a weak state having a vice president with this capacity and now a president this capacity so they had a lot of willpower but there was no resources no stru no no structured process which allows to surpass this barrier from teachers we also see lots of difficulties scarce formation not no specific material for them to use that their, their, their material no support 
lack of time, badly applied. It's not that they know it, it's just they don't know, know how to apply it because they continue in their traditional systems. So all the good will that we had here are not in, in concrete action but by parents we could see that not much and they trusted the well the well the goodwill of the teacher but he does everything he can but if not well has good good formation he will become that knowledge is going to be we will know if if he's doing the right thing because there's so much many things to be done but particularly for those who have intellectual disabilities we somebody we covered something they said this phrase because i'm tired of painting or cutting paper and childish activities. What would this take us? That to a certain point, there was no material, no process. It's just that they included sitting in a, in a classroom and not following educational program, uh, which would, may follow their class classmates. And that will show us very many weaknesses because we would have ended up making books. Because what they say, these children, is that we don't have books. We, I make too much progress, or I never see myself reflected in that space. There's never in my photo of me or my condition who's, who would be useful for me as a role model. And with this, what I didn't know is that we supposed and we found in doing thing, we proposed to see that here, here I learned. And if you help me to change slide, I will tell you where I go from. The first thing is to sign supportive books who are the um, general to be receptive, no adaptations. We have to have to have that license. But he, those who do that, the final report, and we have uh, uh, coming close to intellectual report for the people in the text, the is easily readable books. We aim much more, f go beyond those aiming at people beyond intellectual disability, the, the curricular design, and these texts aim at very many other people people who have um, movement of people with low level of uh, language learnings. So to move all these easy reading elements, Bielus was much more inclusive, not only for the target operation, but on the whole general, a graphic, a graphic location would show people with disabilities living together, uh, given the graphics shown by the book, the great amount of books, and how to design more activities that's been here. All this, under a conception, a clear conception, which is how to state uh, how I do learn. And this uh, uh, declaration of intent, very strong, because this says by the person who says, to, and who says with this intellectual disabilities, that's how I learn, an affirmation of their capacity to learn if and when they have the appropriate support. And from that, uh, a principle which we learned uh, uh, how we could state is that we don't have learning problems, at least we didn't want to see them as such, but rather teaching problem. Convinced of that, that if a student doesn't learn, it's not because of a lack in the capacity to learn, but rather a lack of resources, adaptation, a lack of barriers that we have not is round, which is problem of system or the teacher. That's why we see that books are very aimed at the teacher, provide tools that they learn the capacity to teach, and in that way the, the student can come come up, come forward. It's not only based on the student, but they center the student on those that they don't learn. And it's not like that. The, the book would declare that they are capable of learning, but in this way the results are good thanks to that focus. Then two things to look for is to print this lot, lot books, printed 5,400 books to distribute to all the books freely. But we knew that the book did not fix anything. We would have to learn that the, the, the teacher so to know how to use them. We started with how to, how to train 150 teachers. We finished up training 1,500 large portion of the education system by making an agreement, special agreement with the Ecuador Ministry of Education to deliver the books so they can publish and replicate that and continue to train the, the, the teachers and, and thus build public policy. Fortunately, we had a very good reception from the ministry and today it's, a, it, it's material of general use so the person with intellectual capacity arrives in and they have the appropriate book 
we suppose that all the youth, um, but they also have the specific book where they have in receiving many of the elements that they can use. We're now in a stage where we monitor the book and the, and of that material as to see how they see. And in bits of that mentoring, we had this pandemic come up, and that's been marvelous because the Ecuador Education Ministry has started creating instruments to go to a virtual online learning system, but doing so on on the on the fly, there was no time of generating specialized a specialist book. So resource was already generated and it's the only resource available for this population. And we had the satisfaction of saying, if I had not done this book from 2018, today, the people who, who were in touch with disability would not have any resources. So validated, was enriching, uh, which are uh, making the most of them. Now, having said all this, I want to show you, I want to show you that, I want to go and show you, please change the, post, the slide, I want to show you what is the dynamics of the book where we see the person with physical and visual discapacity although not to get towards other part of the discussion and they're there we're all talking about set that set of of, fly, uh, of bees flowers and we're showing that diversity but if we go to part lower part of the of the book we see that here we state to the teacher what to do what is the objective as a function of the national curriculum that we have, which, which objects are going to be worked in each of the subjects and the course that they ask to do that planning of curricular adaptation. It's a big work that had to be done by the genome to fulfill what the system requires. But here, it's already coded, ready for the teacher, in this case, know what's going to be done, what's going to be prioritized, and what can be left behind in order to have more concrete learnings and more significant learnings. If you go to the next stage, to get towards that, is the DCD, this has, which state here with the curriculum so that the teacher learns how to go with the adaptive curriculum and another set of exercises which can change. If we go a bit further, we can see adaptation to such that the teacher doesn't have to adapt from zero. I don't know how to adapt the adaptation because there's a format, there's a strategy you can improve and, and amplify. We made a teacher guide as well. Go to the next slide. Here we have a self-evaluation for the student. He has to be part of the process of evaluation. But here we present all the planning a planning adapt for curricular adaptation for each of the units where we guide the, the teacher and we say these are priorities for intellectual impairment disability or how to use the resources in this way but also at the same time this is the base then you adjust as a function of each one of the resources stating that what you have to do with this student you have to do with everybody and that's a model universal model which we go want to go there and what moves us as i stated is that through the intervention of intellectual disability to create a better education system in general because i said earlier there's something that defines us obligi ob obliges us to think of ample sameness for the population so not only that people with disability have been included when the education system works for everybody and as madeleine said so if it's everybody then it's everybody i cannot look for um, a benefit or affirmative action, which to a certain point segregates for a system for one or not the other. You have to generate the system for everybody. And it's how we've been able to build public policies from there that leaves us full of full of um, support. And if you manage to have all this support, you have to have all the, like the continuous show is how the structure and the generation of data is 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 deposited and how this practice can become public policy so i make a call all institutions of civil society that you're here that you can be a, an intervention from all those experiences which is us civil society who've managed this issue much more than state the state and i'm going to strength and a shape to all this knowledge and to that empowerment that which already is existing within civil society i leave that Maybe I, I'm just in over time. So, Federico, thank you very much.
for the space. Thank you very much, Daniel, for all the work that you've done here in the preparation on the manual. What you presented here is a good closure of your panel. And I go step by step within the dimension of inclusive education and I run to best practices and some manuals, which are not manuals for students. You have, as you well said, there are much more transformation, evaluation, elements on communication and fight against stigma, which is perhaps the most stigmatized group of people with this capacity, those who have intellectual dis disability, a psycho attitudinal, psychosocial, that answers to the the challenge, education challenge that have been mentioned in the, in the presentation. I have one little thing to be left, which is not strictly refers to this, but rather to the work that you've done, the data analysis that you that that's you've done prior to arrival of the process and the importance of this data, despite the the political will that there was in Ecuador. You've mentioned there was political willpower, there is and there was and the, but without data it's difficult to plan, it's difficult to undertake those steps, necessary steps to take, you know, to attain educational inclusiveness. Thank you very much. We're slightly late. There's a couple of questions from um, participants, so I quickly go through them to read them. There are two questions that I want to uh, uh, transfer to our panelists. On the one hand, we have a question aimed to everybody on census. Census are important sources of information on the population of a country in order to develop public policies. Normally, they're done every 10 years. The question is double. Do we have questions on disabilities and why? I will answer directly, yes, we should include on disabilities. Why? Because we need to recopulate data on disabilities so that they can be turned or included in database and planned public policies. So that's, if any panelist wants to add that to my very synthetic sin 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 uh, answer, please feel free. Second question, Henry, uh, how often should a measurement on disabilities be made, not necessarily through a census? Maybe we can aim this question to Manos or Cynthia or Javier. Then a question aimed to Manos, which how, what best practices in countries in the Latin American region and Caribbean have been done in order to recopulate data on education in the current context? Please, whoever takes the word to be very synthetic summary, one or two minutes. Manos, you can start and then we will leave Cynthia or, and, and or Javier. So, uh, in, um, I think I gave my answer. Uh, censuses and surveys are highly and strongly encouraged to use the questions that have been developed by the Washington group, uh, the short set of questions. We really need these questions to be asked in this way across countries and over time in order to have an accurate picture of the situation with disability and to be able to disaggregate uh, the characteristics of people also with respect to education. In terms of countries in the region that have adopted these questions and also to some extent the additional set of questions that are specifically addressed to children, uh, there are three examples that I could mention. Uh, Suriname is the first one in the region that has adopted uh, the MIX uh, survey uh, and therefore administered both uh, the short set of questions, but also the, the ones that are specifically for, for children, uh, ages 5 to 17. And uh, Chile and Costa Rica are the two uh, countries that have adopted the Washington Group questions uh, in specifically administered surveys uh, on disability. So these are two, three examples, uh, and I would say every country needs to uh, uh, follow such an approach. 
uh, it, it will be really necessary. Uh, otherwise, there's a lot of confusion about uh, who are the people most in need and how do we identify them, as I explained in my presentation. Thank you. Terrific. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, uh, um, Manos. Um, Thank you very much, Manos. Um, in synthetic answer, so also 30 seconds to each to Cynthia and Javier, if you want to complement the information given, please. Simply very quickly and additionally to that's been given, I, I concur to the standards here for the Washington and also, obviously, in the situation of um, alert and early importance, we have to make a lot of progress in early detection. We haven't talked much about that, but I think it's important. And also to add the home service. I think that the home service and compatibility which amongst them is key in Latin America. We made lots of progress. Mr. done a lot of work there in the sense that um, the system is integrated in, in, in home service. And I think that's crucial because census are every 10 years. So this is very slow and uh, in, in the update from one to the other. And the survey of questions is also in, intermediate and it's sample based, but it's clear for the in the assignation of social policies in that regard. Additionally, to the home service, I know that we have to be quick. We also, the systems of uh, information management internal to the educational systems, the planning systems, which in English are called education management, the EMIS. Each education system has a system for recollecting data, which is very important to incorporate the questions within that and also to plan according to um, according to this um, data recovery, the, the, which curriculum would be there, we'll be reviewing every two to three years, and that is very important. I just wanted to put that additionally, add that, that aspect. Thank you both for this reflection and sincere in the issue of uh, those beta, the database which is very important. We think it, we're working on the framework of RUE, by the way, that you communicate so well. Well, I think we are closing our session with a little bit late. I think that it was well worthwhile to have these questions in order to ensure, clear up some questions to our participants. And I would simply want to thank everybody in the participation, obviously the organization of the video conference to make the most of the opportunity to debate this issue, which is so important for everybody for the indication for inclusive education. I am going to uh, close now. We will talk about the main points that have been, we've been seen to the discussion. And we invite you to um, visit the web pages and the documentation that's been presented by our expose, the report by the UNICEF and OECSR indicators and the reports. That oh, that's how I learned because you can propose so much more information and detail on what has been presented by Manus and Javier, Cynthia and Daniel and Magdalena. With this. Well, I would close the session. I thank very much your participation and availability. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. I, I give the floor back to Ma Carolina. Thank you, everybody, from Madrid. Thank you very much to this marvelous panel and to you, Federico, for your moderation and how you were summarizing all the and how you close every all everybody of the issues and i think that the final questions i agree helped in that the whole public be included we have lots of participation and thank you to all the panel very fruitful all the uh, participation and we're now 
finishing wrapping up our first conference in Latin America and the Caribbean and the Hispanic speaking community on inclusive education. We want to thank everybody who has made possible this successful event, Alta Vision Producción, Redapis, Fundación ESL, and Fundación Descubreme. Also to thank those who trusted and added to this conference by providing their support, uh, Austrian University, Ministry of Social Development and Family, National Service of Discapacity, UNICEF, and Telethon, and also the more than 60 expositors and decision makers of the countries that have come on board to the CIRO project initiative to discuss practices and policies which are innovative that support access to inclusive education uh, of quality for those who have disabilities. And the most important to think, the more than 1,500 people inscribed, registered for more than 52 countries throughout the world who followed our conference during these two days, participating actively through the platform and our social networks. Who are them out here who continue with the construction of a world without barrier? We leave you invited for the second conference on employment, which will be made in second quarter of last year, of next year, for the Latin American and Caribbean and the Spanish speaking speaking community. We will continue being communicating next activity through social networks. Please don't stop visiting us. And also, as Federico mentioned, I, I, I want please uh, download all the reports that are for your project LATAM webpage. And on my behalf, I say goodbye. My name is Carolina Garcia. Thank you very much for this invitation and for being part of this Zero Project Society. 